half in the bag. The devil is my hairdo. Oh, hey, sorry I'm late. What? I was down at the homeless shelter having dinner with a client. What? Beer me. Oh, sure. <sighs> hmm. What are you looking at? Well, it looks like Plinkett took out a life insurance policy. Really? Yeah. Does it say for how much? Um, holy shit, a million dollars. Oh my god. And the part where it says who the money goes to is left blank. Hmm. This gives me an idea. Why don't you and I both fill our names in on the ballot for state treasurer? Then we can just steal money from the government. Wait. I have a better idea. Oh? Let's make tacos. Ooh. I have everything we need except for the beef, cheese, lettuce, tomato, sour cream, hot sauce, and shells. It's pretty much everything. Wait, stop talking. I have a much better idea. Let's just write our names in on this legal document. Then we'll kill Plinkett and take all the money. Yeah, you know, I think Plinkett said he was going to the park today to feed joggers. Hmm. There's lots of places there he could have an accident. Mm -hmm. I like your style. Except for the way that you dress and groom yourself and hygiene. It's, uh, well, frankly, it's embarrassing. There he is. I see him. Let's make this look like a horrible accident. I know just what to do. Let's go. Oh, I can't believe we did that. And I can't believe the sound that his body made when it hit the bottom of the gorge. It was this grotesque crunching and squishing sound. Oh, it was awfully funny. We should be quite proud of the work we've accomplished today. No, Jay. I'm afraid what we did was evil. In fact, it's possible that you and I both have a devil inside. Oh, hey, that reminds me. Have you seen Alvin and the Chipmunks, the chip wreck cool? What? South Hartford 911, what is your emergency? Three. Three people. Ma'am, what's the problem? Three people are dead. I killed them. Ma'am. Hello and welcome to Half in the Bag. I'm Jay. And I'm Mike. And we just saw The Devil Inside. That's right, Jay. The Devil Inside is the new scam from director William Something Something. The movie stars actors and was edited on a computer somewhere. This movie is the latest film in a series of very low budget films designed to look like real movies and be released in theaters to make a quick buck via a horribly off-kilter budget-to-profit ratio that the general public seems to be stupidly unaware of. These films used to be called direct-to-video, but now they are called first-run features. These films then vanish from the theaters like a rapist leaving the scene of a crime. So, Jay, what did you think of The Devil Inside? <laughs> oh, I thought this film was a bargain. Mm. It's both a, a found footage film and an exorcism film. Mm -hmm. So you get two horribly overused uh, horror subgenres for the price of one. Well, but did you like the film? No, the movie's a piece of crap. I wanted it to end right when it started. Um, there were a few scenes in there that I was like, okay, neat. But 98% of it was, was pretty bad. I mean, the actors were fine. 
Yeah, um, it's, it's the writing, the, the dialogue they say sounds weird. It feels very unnatural. Well, to me the problem was I, I hate the faux documentary thing unless it's a comedy. I was actually thinking of that, about that several times in this movie. There were parts where I felt like I was watching The Office, but there were no jokes. Yes. Like, it, it was even edited in a way where it feels like this should be a reaction shot of somebody to, you know, to elicit a laugh. Uh, but there were no jokes. There were some good, unintentionally funny things in the movie, but not a, not enough to recommend it as a funny bad movie. But <laughs> there's the the every every exorcism movie is a ripoff of The Exorcist, and so they all have the 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 vulgar dialogue being shouted out by the person that's possessed. So this had some good stuff there, where she's saying like, "I want a skull, fuck you, you faggot," and stuff like that. Would the devil even bother swearing anymore? In today's society? I don't know. It works in the 70s to hear a little girl swearing. Yeah, but... you, yeah you hear worse stuff on, uh, on, on broadcast television now. The devil would, would be, he'd be like, I can't believe they said that. But, but it also had that, that angle that you probably will agree with me with, where you and I probably, since we make movies and since you know, we've shot documentary stuff and worked with actors and all that stuff, as VCR repairmen, well, that's part of the job. Sure. But um, where you kind of just watch it, and, and the general public might not pick up on things, but it's little ticks in acting and shooting where you're like, that's not real, that's not a documentary. Yeah, yeah. That, that's an actress. That's an actress pretending to be a real person in a documentary. About eight years old. My mother murdered three people. Police arrived she at the home. Had committed these murders during an exorcism. And to me, it always just stands out like a sore thumb. It's like, okay. No. Well, and then that that spills over into the the look of the movie too. Like, the opening stuff is supposed to be the police investigating this house, and it's like that was shot on digital video and degraded with uh, filters after the fact. Yeah. You know, it, it never feels like authentic. No. Home movie footage. No. I mean, you have to keep the quality, it's like a, a give and take, because you have to keep the quality level good enough to be a major motion picture on the screen. Yeah. You can't literally shoot those old 1989 footage on a VHS camera. You should. Um, you should, <laughs> but you can. And, and so they, they throw it up there, but it had like this um, kind of like uh, the, the built-in filters in Final Cut Pro were, were used, like yeah. bad TV. And it's like, <laughs> and I'm like, well, also in the case of this movie, it's not supposed to be just like home movie footage that someone found. It's supposed to be they're making a documentary. Yes. And and in real life, this documentary crew would be fired on the first day because they can't hold the camera steady. They're just yeah. constantly zooming in and out. And That's everywhere. another thing, and too. In order to make it look like a documentary, the documentary cameraman is constantly doing this. Yeah, yeah. Like a documentary cameraman can't keep the camera still. It's oversaturation of the style that ends up like defeating it. But Mr. General Public, sure. you know, as far as that stuff goes. It's God's will, you know. And and I would I would be willing to bet there's a good number of dummies out there that go, is this real? <laughs> People think the, uh, the Onion news stories are real. And in Washington this afternoon, Congress attempted to pass a law but failed after neither the House nor the Senate could remember how to do it. Well, you can, you can do a found footage movie and kind of, like Blair Witch, kind of make it seem authentic. Yeah. Um, but doing a, a, a mixture of found footage and documentary and narrative yeah. in one thing and have it like not be a joke. Yeah. Like, it's just like a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Well, I think you had mentioned that uh, you thought this would sort of work as like a cheap movie oh, yeah. if it was shot more in a traditional style, I mean, it, right? it, had, it had too much of a plot for a documentary. Yeah. It had the typical structure of a story. Um, you know, even, even that, that, that pointless and awful scene in the middle where it's like we have to show an exorcism in oh, the middle. Yeah. <laughs> you, it's time. Should I go to a class about exorcisms? <laughs> no, come along with us. We do underground ex exorcisms. Someone, someone's going, well, around the second act, we kind of probably need to have an exorcism in this yeah. movie. Well, there's also things where, like, they, they decide for no reason whatsoever to put multiple cameras locked down inside oh, yeah. the car. 
Right. Which is like, if you're making a documentary about this woman going to visit her mother who's possessed by a demon, why would you do that? Throw them in the car. Unless you want to have an exciting climax to your movie take yeah. place in a car. Yeah. There's certain things in this kind of genre, the, the found footage type movies, that I'm, you kind of have to just go with, you just sort of accept, but it, like like when they're filming the woman on the ground with her throat ripped out, like, okay, I guess maybe they would film that, but yeah, the idea of turning all the cameras on in the car is... Then they had those, like, those really stupid, like, real <laughs> world, like when they, the real world characters go into the, 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 the private room and they talk to the camera. Yeah. Um, Laura, oh yeah, that reminded me of the real world. They have yeah. that confessional room. And then, <laughs> c confessional room, uh, not no pun intended. Oh, yes, sir. I'm worried about David. I'm worried about everyone. I haven't told them everything. No, no. And and I think this may be the first film ever in motion picture history with a pupil cam. Yes, yes. They they set up multiple cameras when they're filming the exorcisms, and they have them labeled in the corner of the frame. There's a timestamp, and then there's also pupil cam, mm -hmm. overhead cam. Like, nobody that documents things uh, prints stuff onto the, the footage like that. No. No one ever. It, the pupil cam also had, a like, a, a, a number system rating. Oh, yeah. Where it showed where the pupil dilation was. So maybe they purchased that pupil cam from a medical supply company. And they couldn't figure out how to shut off the, uh, the on-camera labeling. On screen, yeah. yeah. Damn it, I wish I could get this off. I don't want it to say pupil cam. It's a medical pupil cam used in <laughs> surgeries. <laughs> There was an aspect of this movie that I thought could have worked in a different type of movie, which is the idea of the the rogue priests that mm -hmm. are performing exorcisms outside of the yeah. uh, the Catholic Church's approval. Like if you were to do that in like a, a movie with the tone of like Ghostbusters, <laughs> not like all out farce but comedic. Yeah, you could yeah. do something with that premise. The purpose of the class is to educate priests and, of course, lay people about the devil's presence in modern society. Well, then she goes to the, the church and goes into the exorcist classroom. She goes, no, she walks into the Vatican. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Because anybody can just walk into the Vatican and wander into an exorcism class. With a camera crew. With a camera crew, right. If it is possession, then first and foremost, we must rule out mental illness. Schizophrenia. Bipolar disorder. The course is designed to explore all these conditions. And then the students start arguing. Yeah. I think that this girl really is possessed. And then the other student says, Perhaps. I think she's just a crazy person. Perhaps it is a brain disorder. But the funny thing was they had, they had like the video screen and they're watching like this footage and it's like a night vision shot and she's like Rah! in her eyes. And then it does the like, Rah! like fast motion into yeah. the camera and it, it's clearly like edited like <laughs> And then they're like, okay, what did we think about that video? And you'd be like, that's the most fucking amazing, horrifying thing ever caught on tape. <laughs> it, it, it was borderline farce. Yes. Farcical at that point. I wish the whole movie was, was as funny as certain moments like that. Because yeah. then I would recommend it as a funny, bad movie, but it's mostly just dull. Uh, it was, there was one kind of creepy moment when they first pull the sheet off of her. Oh yeah, and she's all... She's contorted. in like these weird contorted positions and she starts to move and you hear bones cracking. Like, that's kind of creepy. Yeah. But most of the, the scares in a movie like this rely on silence and not seeing what's happening. There'll be long moments where there's silence and then you'll hear something loud off camera and you can't tell yeah. what's happening. Th those are jump scares. They're, yeah. they're really easy to do. The best one was the dog. Oh, yes. It was that like that a, just made me laugh. It I, made me think of like the Jaws ride at Universal, yeah. where it's like, <laughs> yes. Jaws pops out, then goes back into the water. This dog they, jumps it, And it was like a like a, like a a St. Bernard or something comical. <laughs> it just goes, <laughs> like it was an animatronic thing. And then they just go, oh, oh and keep walking. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a mixture of, of six different genres. Is this a found footage? Is it a documentary? Um, because there's contradictions in that. They have titles on their names, but then at certain points in the movie, they're like, shut the camera off, turn the camera off. Okay, I'll turn, hard yeah, cut, yeah. like it was raw footage. So what is it, you know? And, and th those are the kinds of things that were going through my mind. So I would have liked the film more if it just kept the little plot it had. It would have been an all right B-horror movie yeah. or a horror movie in general if it was done right. Sure. There was no like, creepy lighting. It was all just like flat. Yeah. Especially in the hospital scenes. It was not not horror movie lighting. I mean, maybe they were doing that intentionally as a yeah. contrast, but yeah. it just, I don't know. 
I mean, you even don't... like the the basement scene, that middle exorcism was just brightly lit. Like yeah. it's dark when they first go down to the basement, so you understand this is a creepy basement. Mm -hmm. But then they abandon that immediately. We tied her up in the basement <laughs> because we thought it might be a more creepy before your documentary. Film. Yeah, in the logic of the movie, or in the reality of the movie, why would they take this possessed girl and just put her down in the, the creepiest, scariest basement ever? I mean, if you don't want a possessed girl in the room, the bedroom next to you is when you're trying to sleep. That's true. Keep you up at night, as she says, your mother night. sucks cocks in hell. Yeah. She keeps her talking about cocks, you know, <laughs> sucking cocks, so we put her down in the basement near the wine cellar. Speaking of some of the ideas brought up in this movie, you could take a movie like The Exorcism of Emily Rose, um, which was based on a true story, but dramatized, of course. Sure. Um, but the, it brought up the topic of, is a person crazy or is a person possessed? Yeah. And, and, you know, like, uh, the evidence back and forth, with the, which this movie brings up in a clumsy, <laughs> awful, <laughs> embarrassing way. Yeah. But that movie was, was much better. Yeah. Why even introduce that element to, into the movie if it's not going to have anything to do with anything? That's a good point. The Exorcism of Emily Rose is about that. They don't bring that up in, in The Exorcist, you know. That's a movie that's supposed to scare you, like... The girl's really possessed by a demon, and these priests have to stop it. I mean, yeah. maybe they bring it up mildly, but it's not an issue that right. comes up. Uh, and, and then also, I think it came out last year, it was a movie called The Last Exorcism, which is even closer to this movie in that it is the, the documentary-style approach to uh, showing an exorcism. Okay. And that was better done, too. It's not a great movie, but it has a good uh, central character. Uh, it's, it's just a more interesting movie with the same sort of idea of the, the documentary about exorcism. I don't mind the found footage type movies. Some like, of them are okay. Well, like Cloverfield, I mean, it's an all right movie, um, and it's a found footage movie, but yeah. they, were, they aren't trying to say that that's real. Like, you know The Office isn't real. Yeah. It's just the style. I found four voices on the recordings. What does that mean? Multiple demonic possession. Please help my mother. When you have something that's, that's unique and original, you know, bam, yeah. you know, you got the Matrix, so then they make, uh, you know, ballistic versus... Egg, eggs versus Sever? S versus Sever. What was that movie with, um, with, uh, with Batman? What's his name? With Christian Bale? Yeah. Oh, Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Or, or I can't believe I remember that. Jet Li uh, something. The One. The One. Yeah, then there's those. Or, you know, Pulp Fiction, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. A... a endless series of uh, dark humor movies. Yeah. You know, like the bad things, uh, eight heads in a duffel bag, all those crime films. All these the, movies that nobody the, remembers. The, 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 <laughs> the dark comedy films. And then, yeah, so you always have those like those watershed films yeah. and then something that, that copies it. Paranormal Activity, which was made for like $12,000 yeah, or something like that. Yeah, super low budget. So they're like, okay, the people like that security camera, creepy look, like, Let's do the documentary found footage thing again. Yeah, blah, 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 yeah. blah. And this is just a, a retarded baby from that parentage. Yeah. I don't even know why they bother giving movies titles when they come out this time of year. They should all just be called Fuck You, It's January. <laughs> that should be on the poster for every movie. Fuck you, know, you, it's January. <laughs> Fuck you, it's January. <laughs> Fuck all of you, it's January. Fuck you, it's now February. Well, we should briefly talk about the ending of this movie because that's been a big uh, oh, controversy sure. of uh, the word on the street. Little Johnny on the street, he told me that theaters across the country are booing at the end of this movie. Um, well, the movie is building to a climax. Um, of course, it's only 82 minutes. Yes. So you're looking at your watch and going, oh, there's going to be some sort of resolution. Um, they're all driving in a car and then the movie ends. Yes, yes, in mid-action. In mid-action. It's it, That actually, the ending didn't bother me that much because all these found footage movies end the same way. Sure. They all in that exact same way. Camera shakes, you don't know what's going on, and uh, it's ambiguous as far as if everybody died or not. Cut to credits. Yeah. They all kind of end that way, but this one goes that extra mile by bringing up a title card right after that with uh, a website address. This case was never solved. Visit www. Uh, fuckoffaudience.com for more info. And it's like, that's really bold. It felt like the end of Halloween 6 when uh, Donald Pleasance died during the production. Yeah. And it's like, I'm going to the, the abandoned warehouse where Michael Myers is and I'm going to have the final confrontation with him. <laughs> and, then, and then they throw the mask on the ground and they go, the end. <laughs> 
I think you hear like you hear him scream. You hear him scream goes, from ah! earlier in the movie, and it's like, what just happened? Yeah, it's like, and then it goes in memory of Donald Pleasance. It's the worst way to pay tribute to the memory. He of. obviously died during the filming of this movie. <laughs> it felt like that. I mean, that's understandable. Yeah, because the guy died, but right. um, you know, the director didn't didn't get his chiropractor to fill in. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> There's, there's nihilistic endings that work, and there's ones where it just feels like a cop-out because they didn't know how to end their movie. Yeah, and, and this one felt like that. If it was a true unsolved mystery or unsolved paranormal thing, yeah. and you can go and there was a real story behind it, and it was very you know, well orchestrated, the film and stuff, then it would have been like, okay, I, I'm interested in this story, but it was a made-up thing. Yeah, and then you go to the website, and it's like this cheap, crappy website with screen grabs from the movie, and you're like, what's, why did I go to this website? I just realized something, Jay. What's that? This is the history of humanity. This is the history of the world. Okay. People taking advantage of dumb masses. You'll learn more in five minutes of an exorcism than you were in three months in some class. Uh, it's, a, it's a small group of people exploiting the stupidity of, of a large group of people. Guess what the number one movie at the box office this last weekend was? What? The Devil Inside. So, Jay, would you recommend The Devil Inside? No. Mike, would you recommend The Devil Inside? No. Oh, The Devil Inside. Well, now that we're done discussing that, we should probably get around to signing Plinkett's life insurance policy. Right. Poor Mr. Plinkett. He died way too late. You know what would have saved him? What? If he had some sort of magical flying shoes. You mean like Flying Ryan has in the feature film called Flying Ryan? What? Meet Ryan. He didn't want to leave his friends and move here. Because the kids in this town are mean and tough. Hey, there's a kid over there. And they really don't like strangers. Said Lee. Scram. Your history. So let's talk about Flying Ryan. <laughs> uh, Flying Ryan was a. Uh, a user-suggested film yes, that, yes. Uh, that we, we watch on Mr. Plinkett's VCR. Mm -hmm. um, it is a glorious film from 2003, uh, apparently shot on digital video without uh, a 24p film look. According to the director's commentary track, which the DVD does inexplicably have, it was shot on the PD-150. Uh, the genesis for this film happened because the distributor, Roger Corman, decided that he wanted to distribute some movies shot on digital video. This was actually shot on the PD-150, the Sony PD-150. Right. And uh, not film, but digital video, the new, uh, the new wave. But oddly enough, it's the same camera that another film called The Cleaning Lady was shot on. Uh, what? What? It's, uh, it was, it's, it's in glorious four by three aspect ratio. Yes. Uh, digital video, I mean, it's, it's what you want in the look of your film. Want me to grind your face in, McGuire? Oh, get wet! Oh. But for those of you that don't know, which uh, would probably be everybody, right? Uh, Except for that one person that recommended that we watch he's, Flyin' Ryan. He's the only person aside from us that's seen it, but uh, Flyin' Ryan is the story of a young boy named Ryan who, along with his mother, moves into the house of his creepy horror movie aunt and uh, adjusting to life in a new town is difficult for Ryan until he acquires a pair of uh, bike reflector things that are magical, and he puts them on the back of dirty old tennis shoes, and they make him fly. This looks like an exciting children's adventure story. Yes, yes. But he spends most of the movie getting picked on by bullies. Yeah. <laughs> and, and even in the exciting conclusion of the film, when he's trying to rescue his dog from the bully that stole his dog for no reason. Yeah. Um, he, he goes into this, like, f abandoned factory place, and, and it's all outdoors, and it's yeah. like... Um, and they're running around on the, the scaffolding and the, the, the catwalks, and there's things there. and. 
and he never flies. There's all these amazing opportunities where flying would have really come in handy, and he just doesn't do it. He, he fl flies to the location. Oh, right. He flies there, which he didn't really need to, but then once he's there, he doesn't fly again at all. Yeah, he could have hovered around the, the, the construction area, <laughs> looked for the dog, and then got the and dog just, and left, took whoop. off. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, we watched this film with our friend Rich Evans. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, which some of you may know Rich Evans. <laughs> um, Rich had mentioned uh, that it, it had the, the, the typical setup for like a Teen Wolf kind of movie where, oh, sure. you know, this person gets this magical gift uses it, uses it, or, and or abuses it, and then at the end it's taken away from him, yeah. and he has to use his own gumption, or his own wit, or skill, or his own heart to, to really win the day at the end. Yeah. Um, and then nothing like that happens in this movie at all. No, no. Well, even like the basic premise of a boy gets magical shoes that can make him fly. Like, that sounds like a decent kiddie movie premise, but it's not the shoes that make him fly. These reflectors, boy, I got these off of one of your father's old model airplanes. My dad's? Yes. <laughs> so there was some sort of vague connection to flying mm. with, the, with mm. the magical things. Well, the effects when he does fly, the very few times that he does fly are amazing. Here I go. Well, sometimes it's just a low angle looking up yeah, at him, and he's just standing same. with the sky behind him going. Or, or him on a green screen floating around across the screen. So I can see why they didn't do the flying effect very often. Oh, oh, they also do a dummy's legs for parts of it, where the camera's like, look, all you see are the legs, and it's like. Flying Ryan is, uh, he's 12. I think, according to the back of the box. Um, and for one, they, they picked a pretty friggin' ugly kid to be <laughs> Flying Ryan. Yeah. That's pretty pretty mean of you to say. Yeah, he's in the movie and then he's dating this, this, this smoking hot Latina. Yep, that's why some people call him a basil. And, uh, and, and they have this like... I, I don't know if it's appropriate to call a 12 year old smoking hot. And I'm not even sure if she was a Latina. <laughs> Anyways, um, so, so it's implied that they're going to have sex in many scenes because they, they have a sleepover. Um, oh, yes, they, yeah, she they, keeps sleeping over multiple nights in a row, She right? sleeps over a lot. They go swimming together in a pool. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, they, they kiss. How are you doing? Flying high. It's a little soon. It's a little soon for kid kisses. Yeah, there um, shouldn't be sexual chemistry in a movie starring 12 year olds. Tuli boobs? <laughs> no, yeah. no, and, and that's, the, that's the point exactly. It's like when you have the, the first kiss in a movie, I mean, it can be between 12 year olds, but it has to be like sort of a, like a sweet little innocent moment, like a peck and like, yeah. uh, and that's kind of what this is, but it, it, it was in the context of the end of the movie kiss. Mm. where the director and the kids were all awkward about it. So they like, run away, <laughs> kiss and run away. And it's like, and, it's, and then you're like, ooh, that's you feel, creepy. You feel dirty the, watching it. The, yeah, the, I, I lost the erection that I had throughout the whole film at that moment. So besides for that, uh, the director was apparently a, a brain dead hippie woman. That's the great thing about digital video. Uh, it's exactly amazed me how flexible uh, the system is with natural light, low light, just great. Yeah, so the movie was released by Roger Corman's company, New Concord, and I was curious about the director. I was like, who, who made this movie? Who would make this movie? And it's apparently a woman named Linda Shane who's been working for Roger Corman for many, many years. She's been an actress in several films that he's made. And what are these films? Um, well, she was in Humanoids from the Deep, uh, Big Bad Mama 2, of course, we all know Big Bad Mama 2. Um, Not of This Earth, which was the first film starring Tracy Lords that wasn't a horrible, filthy, underage porno. Munchie, along with Munchie Strikes Back, the popular sequel. What are you looking at? 
But uh, most noteworthy for her, her groundbreaking performance in the movie Screwballs, the Porky's ripoff Screwballs, uh, where she played the iconic role of Bootsy Goodhead. So, uh, Tim, can I give you some more milk? No, thanks. I'll have some more milk, Bootsy. Oh, I dated a girl named Bootsy Goodhead. Oh, really? She's fucking terrible at oral sex. <laughs> so listening to the commentary track was infuriating. Yeah, yeah, she talks about it as if she made a, an actual movie. These figurines um, are become critical plot points later on. And, and here is Geneve Rupert, the uh, lead ingenue of the film. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a level of, of, of uh, delusion going on. So I started thinking and then came up with uh, magic shoes with one wheel. This must have been like like she had some dirt on him. And so he's like, okay, go make a movie with this stuff that we have in the corner of the basement of our offices. Wow, you, you better say that that's, uh, that's merely a, a, an opinion of yours. Or... It, it's, it's a, a very, uh, probably, it's probably a very accurate opinion. Though. Okay, okay. And to the point where I would say that's exactly what happened. I'm sorry, our lawyer's calling us. Oh, okay. Perhaps Roger Corman, when Linda Shame, um, Shane, I'm sorry. <laughs> when Linda Shane called him up and he says, Roger Corman, and she says, Roger, it's Linda. And he goes, oh God. Actually, I'd imagine it'd be who? And then yeah. she says, Bootsy Goodhead. I go, oh. He poops under class. And then she's, I want to make a film, a touching family film. I don't make family pictures, doll. <laughs> I, I want to make a touching film. And it's like, yeah, whatever. He, <laughs> and, and he gave her like the least amount of uh, budget money possible. Yeah. And, and... and then, when they steal his best friend, there's a dog in the film, which looks like a rat. Um, <laughs> and and it just shows up halfway through the film, and then it gets kidnapped It at becomes the, end. the main plot point of the second half of the movie. Yeah. No, Theo! Well, I think the reason is so they can put it on the cover. Oh, yeah. So that it We have a movie like, about a little boy that can fly, and he has a, a yeah. cute dog. Yeah, and then that's it. Um, but, but a truly, truly awful film. <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, Jay. Yes. Let's see if Flying Ryan can really fly. I guess we just found out. Flying Ryan. The sky's the limit. Oh, what a terrible, terrible movie. Oh. Yeah. All right, signed. Um, what are we supposed to do with this now? Mail it out? Or? I think so. Hey, check out there. Oh, uh, 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 Mr. Plinkett, how are you alive? I mean, uh, why are you here? I thought you were going to the park. Nah, I decided to lie down on the kitchen floor for a bit. Yeah, straightens the old back out. And in other news, former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher was killed today when she was pushed off a bridge while out for a morning walk. The former head of state was visiting the U.S. on what was to be her final Goodwill tour. Ironically, she died while wearing a patriotic American jumpsuit that was given to her by former President Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm.